My name is Josh from Cyclones Oz and here is your detailed nationwide weather forecast update for Wednesday, June 4th, 2025. There's a lot to get through today. A massive storm brewing in the Tasman Sea right now. Thank goodness it's not going for Australia, otherwise we would have some very serious problems. It's heading for the South Island of New Zealand, which are better built for these weather systems. But boy, oh boy, is this a storm. And on the other end of the uh, nation as well, we've got a powerful storm going into the southwest of Western Australia. So this is a detailed packed forecast update. If you haven't already, please consider subscribing, but let's get stuck straight into things over in the Tasman Sea where this monster of a system is brewing up at this point in time. Like I said, racing towards the South Island of New Zealand, you can see conditions now starting to get a bit gnarly across New Zealand's North Island and South Island as well. The rainfall piling into the North Island about to reach Auckland at this point in time and winds starting to get quite strong onto the northern side of the North Island as well. Winds also starting to pick up on the South Island of New Zealand but they're nowhere near as strong at this point in time. And this system here raging right out in the middle of the Tasman Sea. Yesterday this was just a weak low pressure system coming off the northeast New South Wales coastline. It has undergone a process, and this is a real meteorological term, called bomb cyclogenesis, which is where a system drops 24 millibars of pressure in 24 hours, and that's uh, the classic rapid intensification. Both tropical cyclones and extra tropical cyclones, like this one here, which is a non-tropical system, can do that, and that's why this system is classifiable as an extra tropical cyclone. All low pressure systems, north or south of the hemisphere, east or in the western hemisphere, are classified as cyclones whether they're tropical or non-tropical. The differences come from tropical cyclones, etc, etc. I'll leave some more information in the pinned comments. But anyways, let's get into the forecast aspect of this. Whatever's happening right now in the New South Wales uh, coastline pales in comparison to what's going to occur over in New Zealand. There's still some strong winds along the New South Wales east coastline and some heavy rainfall swinging into the Jervis Bay and Wollongong area at this point in time, which will actually make it up into the Sydney area. And that's the first thing that I want to be talking about at this point in time. The forecast models didn't really pick up on this, but I imagine some showers, which could get quite heavy at times this morning and into early this afternoon will move into the Sydney metro area continuing through this evening with some heavier showers expected into the mid-north coast and into the Hunter region as well later this afternoon and into this evening. They will pretty much exclusively be coastal based. We're expecting falls between 10 to 40 millimetres along the coast north of Wollongong through Sydney up to Newcastle, Foster and then up towards Tari and Kempsey so in already floody impacted communities but thankfully the rainfall is going to be falling uh, isn't going to be falling further inland where flooding does become a very serious concern if it was to occur like that and the rainfall isn't going to be as ridiculously heavy as some of the falls that we have recently been seeing along the New South Wales mid-north coast and into the Hunter region so there is a little bit of good news there. Winds are going to be quite strong with associated showers and storms here if especially if we do get some thunderstorms blowing through winds are going to be quite strong averaging 40 to 60 kilometers an hour with peak gusts up to 80 or 90 kilometers an hour here and I imagine there is some hazardous surf conditions along the New South Wales east coast especially north of Oladola through Jervis Bay up uh Wollongong area, Sydney area, and then again north of Newcastle up towards Foster and Tari. I imagine there are some damaging surf conditions currently occurring there, with winds expected to pick up over the next couple of hours as well for some of these regions. In fact, reaching a maximum north of Newcastle around Kempsey and Coffs Harbour later tonight, where winds offshore are going to be very strong up to 95 or even 100 kilometres an hour. I imagine we are going to see some really damaging surf conditions developing. Uh, and winds also quite strong up into southeast Queensland waters as well offshore from Stradbroke Islands and Morton Island. Uh, we could be seeing some strong wind gusts up there. They will ease off though through tomorrow afternoon and into tomorrow evening as a high pressure ridge builds and much weaker wind conditions, much cooler, calmer uh, and more collected weather is expected to build in this place in this system's place through tomorrow. But yeah, all in all, a very strong system, that's for sure. It has transformed dramatically overnight once again and it's now almost frontal based here, but this is still a very, very powerful system and it looks impressive as well. If we zoom right out to uncover uh, or encompass the entire Pacific region, the entire Australia Pacific region, you can see the system here sticking out like a sore thumb. North to south, it is about as tall as the eastern seaboard, in fact, from Melbourne right up towards Cape York. This system here is huge. It is encompassing pretty much all of New Zealand at this point in time, and this system here still raging in the middle of the Tasman Sea, so a very, very powerful extratropical cyclone, that's for sure, and one to be taken very seriously if you are over in New Zealand. I know I don't have a massive audience from New Zealand, but this system here, packing a punch, that's for sure, and over the next couple of hours, further intensification is expected. Peak wind gusts later this afternoon and into tonight will be between 130 to 150 kilometers an hour, careening into the northern parts of the South Island through tonight into early tomorrow morning. A very, very powerful system, that's for sure. One of the strongest storms, hopefully, of this winter season. We've had two strong storms in the last month over in the Tasman Sea. It is a trend of strengthening storms that we've seen over the last couple of uh, months, especially with how warm the Tasman Sea waters are, and it is a trend that I fear will continue throughout the next couple of months as well.
Anyways, we're going to leave the eastern seaboard and southeast Australia just for a second. I want to get over to the second big storm, or the first big storm that was occurring well before this one blew onto the scene, but this one here paling in comparison to the Tasman Sea one. This one, of course, over in the southwest of Western Australia, which has been providing some pretty hit and miss rainfall accumulations, but the rainfall now are really beginning to build across the southwest corners, and that's expected to continue throughout the remainder of today. It is just a sea of showery, wet, miserable conditions across the southwest and the lower west this morning. Very unpleasant weather even for this time of the year we're not looking forward to this type of stuff and I called it Perth is now desperate for winter to be over I knew that this would happen straight away once the first couple of fronts came through Perth residents would be having enough of the cold weather and would want to return to the warm weather we just cannot make our mind up down here unfortunately the rainfall hasn't been too great into the weed belt region we have had some falls out into the weed belt of between 5 to 25 millimeters or so uh, they've kind of been more northerly uh, focused north of Morrick and Kalani and Dalmolyne those sort of areas we've had some heavier falls out there and some good falls also out into the gold fields at this point in time but unfortunately for the most part of the wheat belt hasn't received anything crazy in the way of rainfall my personal weather station has picked up 70 millimeters of rainfall since monday and it is rapidly growing i reckon we're going to uh, tickle over 120 or 130 millimeters of rainfall i'm a little bit further south of perth and a little bit closer to the coastline as well which is why the rainfall accumulations have been heavier but for the most part rainfall accumulations have been very hit and miss through a lot of perth suburbs some of them have been absolutely drenched overnight and some of them have missed out pretty much completely so uh, don't fret right now there is still plenty more rainfall still to come but this is classic showery weather that we're seeing coming through here some places picking up the majority of the rainfall, other places picking up the minority of the rainfall. So still a lot more rainfall to come though, and I don't I don't reckon there's going to be many places with uh, small totals in the rainfall gauges uh, as we get out towards tonight into tomorrow morning. Rainfall expected to pick up through today. It's going to reach a maximum probably around midday before very slowly easing off as the winds turn out of the southwest. And once those winds do swing around to the southwest, not so much the west, but actually the southwest, the rainfall will be on its way out for the Perth metro area. Rainfall steadily easing off through tonight, clearing through tomorrow morning and into tomorrow afternoon and it looks like we're going to have a, a couple of uh, or a couple of hours less wet weather than what we were initially expecting with the fine sunny conditions returning for Friday by the looks of things as a weak high pressure ridge builds in this system's place. Still plenty more rainfall to come though and the forecast models are highlighting that with a further 50 millimeters expected just today alone around the Perth metro area and if we throw tomorrow into the mix as well we're expecting a further 50 to 80 millimeters through much of the coastal regions especially around Perth down towards Mantra and I Again, I do reckon that Bickley is going to run away with the highest rainfall accumulations anywhere in the southwest from this weather system at this point in time. Uh, yeah, maximum rainfall accumulations up to around 80 millimetres or so. The convective forecast model is also on board with something in that kind of ballpark at this point in time. The axis hasn't quite updated for the, for the afternoon hours just yet, but we are still looking at about 50 millimetres or so on top of what has already fallen. So for some regions, that is going to take them over the 100 millimetre mark since Monday. Certainly one of the wettest cold fronts we have seen in quite a while through southwestern Australia. Australia. Uh, severe weather in terms of damaging winds isn't necessarily a concern at this point in time. We have had some strong wind gusts associated with showers, but they've more kind of been on the severe thunderstorm side of things. And there are some strong winds currently occurring right now. Rottnest Island blowing 55 kilometers an hour out of the northwest. Garden Island also blowing about 45 kilometers an hour out of the northwest at this point in time. But for the most part, winds aren't a significant threat from this weather system. And I don't imagine that they are going to become a significant threat either from the system here. Unless you get yourself buried in some severe thunderstorms currently heading out towards Maureen Rock and Southern Cross at this point in time where we do have a very gnarly cell moving out there. Uh, Convective-based severe thunderstorms will present some uh, damaging wind threats, but at this point in time, winds don't look to be too strong or too much of a concern after the thunderstorms that blew through last night. So that is some good news there, at least from the wind front, that it isn't too much of a problem at this point in time. But yeah, we will just kind of yeah, keep playing it by ear and uh, see what uh, happens across the southwest of WA because still plenty more severe weather yet to occur uh, over the next 24 to 36 hours hours or so before the conditions finally start to ease off tomorrow. Now, uh, what's driving all of this? It's another important factor that's as important as the forecast itself. Again, sea temperatures are sky high offshore from the southwest of WA. 25 degrees if you're north of Perth, around Durian Bay and Geraldton. Sea temperatures boiling hot up there. And then offshore from the Perth waters and Rottnest Island, 23, pushing 24, pushing 25 degrees Celsius in spots, especially as you get further north. Obviously, they're beginning to cool now as this low pressure system whips up those cooler waters from down deep. But uh, still very warm sea temperatures, and that's why we're seeing so much evaporation and 
so much rainfall and so much heavy to severe thunderstorm type stuff moving through into the southwest and especially the lower west. That's why Perth has been smashed comparatively speaking to the southwest which generally takes the brunt of these systems here. Uh, but yeah we've been absolutely smashed and that is again pretty much all in part due to the very warm sea temperatures offshore from the southwest of WA. Thankfully that this is the front that's going to take the edge off those sea temperatures which means further fronts aren't likely to be as intense which is good because we've got another strong-ish one coming through next Tuesday and Wednesday that will leave a couple of uh, or a couple more millimeters in the rain gauge and potentially some strong wind threats as well and then again Saturday and Sunday the 14th and 15th of uh, June respectively and then more frontal based systems coming through into the third week of June by the looks of things Monday Tuesday and Wednesday the 16th 17th and 18th of June whether these systems are going to be strong enough to make it out into the wheat belt we're still a little bit unsure of at this point in time but you can see in the 10 to 14 day rainfall period at this point in time the second and the third week of June rainfall accumulation is still looking pretty healthy across the southwest of Western Australia and if we encompass the rainfall that's coming through in the next couple of days as well rainfall accumulation is still looking very healthy across southwest Western Australia as well it's a similar picture for South Australia Victoria and Tasmania as well good rainfall accumulations coming through in the next 14 days as well plenty of rainfall coming through for the Victorian coastline and it's going to be in a bit of a similar situation to what Western Australia has got right now so let's break that down for you in detail tomorrow afternoon and tomorrow evening we're expecting a weak cold front to brush up against South Australia and into Victoria 25 millimeters possible through Friday night into Saturday morning and then a low pressure system sweeping up behind this system here through the southern ocean into the Great Australian Bight and then getting itself Saturday night into Sunday morning wedged in the Bass Strait and this is where a shower a shower twain a shower train begins for the Victorian coastline especially for the western Victorian coastline between Robe in South Australia Mount Gambia Waterball and then across towards Melbourne expecting showers to be coming up from the south on the western side of the system here which is going to keep temperatures very very low that's for sure winds will be high rainfall will be piling in and snow expected on the high peaks is down to elevations as low as about 900 meters on Victoria and the New South Wales side of things snow also expected for as far north as the Bathurst area as well uh, on the uh, on the more eastern side of this front here it's actually going to be a little bit warmer by contrast over Tasmania temperatures expected to be a little bit more milder there rainfall also expected to be a little bit heavier on the east coast of Tasmania before finally on Tuesday and Wednesday after a, uh, multiple days of rainfall this system heads out into the Tasman Sea and then off towards New Zealand dragging the pesky rainfall with it but plenty of rainfall expected in just that week-long period between Sunday the 8th of June out to Sunday the 15th of June with a bit, uh, with the bulk of that rainfall coming through in a short period of time uh, between Sunday Monday and Tuesday so let's take a look at that right now in some detail you can see rainfall accumulations on Sunday Monday and Tuesday three-day rainfall accumulations could be as high as 100 millimeters on the western coast of Victoria with widespread falls between 10 to 40 millimeters also expected into the western half of Victoria, especially through a lot of those parched agricultural regions. Falls between 25 to 75 millimetres expected into the high country and around the high country through New South Wales and Victoria, and falls between 25 to 75 millimetres also expected through much of the eastern coast of Tasmania and into the central highlands through Tasmania as well, with slightly higher accumulations up pushing 100 millimetres are possible through Sunday and Monday there. Before that rainfall gets dragged down into the Tasman Sea and it becomes no longer Australia's problem at this point in time. But yes, yeah, certainly some more rainmaking systems expected for South Australia, Victoria and Tasmania. The best chance of really heavy rainfall is going to come through on Sunday and Monday at this point in time. And I think people in the western coast of Victoria, especially if you do live south of uh, kind of the Ararat and the Ballarat area in just this general pocket here, I know that doesn't encompass everywhere in Victoria that's drought impacted at this point in time, but get really excited for this rainfall because it's going to materialize when we're talking about showers coming in and situated or a low pressure system situated in the Bass Strait like it is uh, expected to do for a couple of days. There's going to be very few locations that miss out completely on the showers and the rainfall at this point in time. So get excited this rainfall is good and for some it's going to quench the drought conditions that they've got there it's not going to solve the drought problem it's not going to solve uh, Victoria and South Australia's rainfall problem in its entirety but it's going to go miles it's going to be leaps and bounds towards the solution to that rainfall problem so this is very good rainfall indeed and people should get excited for it and considering that it is going to be whipping up a lot of uh, cold air from the south especially on the western side of the system here we're going to see some pretty decent snowfall accumulations into the high country around New South Wales and Victoria as well snow isn't something we've looked at on the Cyclone Source channel for quite a while, but we're expecting a very, very good dumping of up to 80 centimetres of snow onto some of the high peaks through uh, New South Wales and up to 60 or 70 centimetres onto the high peaks of Victoria. And snow, like I said, down to elevations as low as about five or 600 metres in some locations, especially through Victoria. You can see the snow line here about 500 metres above sea level. Heavier snow accumulations will be reserved for up about 1,200 to 1,300 metres up by the looks of things. Snowfall as low as about 700 metres down in Tasmania. 
but only a few centimetres expected down in the Tasmanian highlands, pushing up to about 25 centimetres into the highest peaks, but snow is expected and light dustings could fall as low as five or 600 metres through much of Victoria, uh, especially through the high country. So again, get excited for a little bit of snowfall and snowfall making it as far north as Orange and even as far north as the mountains outside of the Barrington Tops and Tamworth. So again, plenty of cold weather, weather to come, plenty of unstable, rainy, wet weather to come. And it's certainly something to be getting excited for if you are in the southeast of Australia, especially if you have been struggling recently because of the drought conditions. And just briefly before I finish off this video here, rainfall accumulations over the next 14 days, uh, looking high and dry elsewhere. There will be another couple of showers coming in from the northwest over in the West Australian region uh, through the Gascoin and into the Pilbara. And that could leave rainfall accumulations up to 25 or 30 millimetres being dragged in from cold frontal activity uh, this coming weekend and into early next week. But at this point in time, apart from that, the tropics looking high and dry. Uh, the WA tropics, the Northern Territory tropics and the Queensland tropics, nothing to report about in terms of significant rainfall. In fact, the wettest location through the Northern Territory will actually be in the southwestern corner of the state, associated with frontal systems bringing a few residual showers and rainfall bands through there. But again, nothing more than a couple of spits out there. And rainfall across central to far northern Queensland as well, looking very dry. They are going to be entering, well and truly entering their dry season very, very soon. Uh, good news for them because they need that dry season to come. It cannot come soon enough to start drying out the record, or definitely in some places, the record rainfall that they faced in the 2024-25 wet season. But yeah, on that note, that basically does it for today's forecast update. It has been a slightly longer one with plenty of detail. So if you have enjoyed it, then please let me know in the comment section down below and also leave a like and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. The support lately has been much appreciated. A uh, special shout out, of course, to the channel sponsors. Their name is on screen right now. or Their names are on screen right now. Again, the list keeps growing and growing and growing. So click the join button if you want to uh, get yourself at mention. It's top part of the video. But on that note, that is going to be all for me today. I'll catch you on the next storm. Goodbye.